Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, you're welcome to subscribe, share, like. Um, I, was, I got sent a video um, last week and I thought about it last night and I thought, you know what, I'm going to talk about it because it was about Jamaica being very, very high on the stock market and Bloomberg did this video and they were interviewing, um, what's his name? N Nigel Clark, who's the finance minister of Jamaica. Now, when I was listening to it, it sounded a bit goggly gook because, you know, I'm not an economist. I don't understand all those terms. And therefore, I don't think fellow Jamaicans would be able to understand them either. You know, when I'm talking about fellow Jamaicans, unless you're into economics or you have high academia, then you're not really going to understand what they're talking about. Maybe I'm, I hope I'm not being um, facetious in saying that. But I consider that if I don't know something, there are going to be other people who don't understand it as well. That's basically what I'm saying. We're not all academ or academics. And when you listen to that video by Bloomberg, you know, it is kind of highfalutin. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to break it down as best as I can. Um, I did a little bit of research, so I'm going to have to read it because it's not coming from me um, because I, like I said, I'm not an economist, but it will help you to understand when I show you the video what it means, hopefully. So, Bloomberg claims that Jamaica had the best performing stock market in 2018. Um, Nigel Clark, finance minister, speaking to the UN, officially shared how this was achieved. And then I'll show you the video after this. According to the presenter, Jamaica has achieved this by upgrading debt training. Now, I had to look that up. And apparently it's about consolidating debt. It's about debt swap with the International Monetary Fund. It's about reallocating spending. Um... It's about allowing investment. And as we know, the Chinese have heavily invested in Jamaica with the Belt and Road Initiative. Um, and because China is evolving very, very fast on the stock market, on the bond stock market, that can only help Jamaica because they're heavily involved in Jamaica. OK, and also China involved in the mining industry. So, he also said it's going to be done by squaring public finances. Okay, that is because there was, um, he's trying to repair the damage to public finances, which was caused by decades of debt, the tropical storms and natural disasters we've been seeing over the last couple of years. Um, the 1990s bank crisis also played a part. Um, loan package, the IMF loan package, that also played a part. And they will intend to replay this, re um, repair this by um, inflation targeting, reducing interest rates, stamping out corruption. That's police corruption, government, drugs, trafficking, that kind of stuff. Then he mentions renaissance in terms of mining. And Andrew Holness, remember there was this big thing about the cockpit mining where a lot of the locals were really concerned that the government was allowing um, miners to go in and mash up the country, especially where, um, you know, destroy their water sources and stuff like that. Andrew Holness apparently um, claims there will be no trade-off. Um, legalities are still proceeding and, you know, he said he's not going to trade off environment over economy. So um, I'm going to put the video of the cockpits concerned, the locals concerned, uh, below. There's also a video that um, Jamaica is doing so that the locals can understand what's happening with the economy. They're very, very short videos. I'm not quite sure whether it makes it uh, just because you're going to put Torres Riley singing a song about the economy. I'm not quite sure whether or not it's st it's still going to resonate what it actually means. It may do, but it may not. Um, so Bloomberg, in March of this year, their headlines was... Jamaica's mining revival turns red earth into gold for hedge funds. 
So that's all the bauxite that they, you know, referring to bauxite. Apparently, Aluma prices have drawn a new investment, um, drawn new investments, um, which is probably why Gisco, which is the Jamaican owned company, it's a, a mining giant, have closed down Alpart mining refinery and that has lost locals 1,000 jobs um, but however they've got their eyes on the Kayser um, box salt company instead so the two of them I think are probably linked but you have to ask yourself you know we know that how can I put this in a diplomatic way we have to hope that um, locals are going to be recruited and not international people coming over and working in these companies because like I said 1,000 locals have lost their job due to the Alpart closing down um, and Kaiser I think because it's built on a layer of bauxite I guess it looks more attractive then he talks about macroeconomic stability, another long word. Um, it's another term used for protecting the national economy from external shocks like the OPEC crisis. Remember when um, the Arabs, um, what did they do? Oil embargo, that's the word I was looking for. In 1973, that, 1973 that caused um, gas shortages. So that so what they when macroeconomics is supposed to prevent those kind of shocks not quite sure how it's going to do that but that is what um, they're claiming it also is a buffer against currency and interest fluctuation so that currency and interest rates won't go up and down they'll be pretty stable and it also allows trade to be in connected which is where the belt and road initiative um, comes in Jamaica has been accused of failing to invest in infrastructure. This was a few years ago. And they're saying that that is why they're not, um, their GDF, GDP was so high, um, which included the upgrade and rehabilitation of major roadways, as well as upgrading telecommunication systems. So now they've invested over 600 million on upgrading the police communication systems. Um, they've also um, opened the development, the development Bank of Jamaica in June of this year. It was in place before, but the actual launch was in June of this year, which is a government owned institution committed to supporting local entrepreneurs, which is great. Um, Jamaica's significant economic and infrastructural development initial initiative comes under a new memorandum of understanding with the Republic of China. So, like I said, you know, um, a lot of this um, Jamaica's instability is um, coming from China and other international investors. Um, and that memorandum of understanding was signed in April 2019. And the Belt and Road Initiative is, in connect is interconnecting China with Africa Asia and the Caribbean. You'll notice they're all black countries. Um, and that is for trade, to improve trade. And then um, he talks about investing in technology in training to produce, improve productivity and labour. And Paul Alstrom, founder of Alta Global Ventures, has announced a partnership with Bottega School to train 1,000 um, fully stack technology full stack technology engineers in Jamaica and I hope they're black Jamaicans I have to say that because I am a bit facetious because Paul Astrom isn't I don't know if he's a white Jamaican but he's definitely not black so I get I only get concerned because don't mind all these people investing in Jamaica but they invest for a reason and Jamaica, as when it gets big and when it goes high on the, um, like it's going high on the stock exchange, are the black Jamaicans going to benefit? That is my concern. 
or is it going to be the Asian and Oriental and white Jamaicans or white international or white people coming in, Asian people coming in that are not Jamaicans who are going to benefit in the long run? Of course, if you're spending billions and billions, they're going to want something out of it. And it's a bit like Trump. He invests billions and billions, but they want something out of it. They're not doing it for free. What is the ultimate price? Jamaica will go up and will have credibility, will have financial stability. But what cost is that to the indigenous Jamaicans? That's all I'm saying. Um, they've also done food safety training and that's already been rolled out. Farmers and exporters have received training. There's a food safety conference, which was held in September. I think it was the 25th to 28th of September this year. And that requires basic food safety requirements are met. And that's probably why when we were in Jamaica um, in September, just a couple of months ago, what are we now, November? Yeah. Um, why we didn't see any vendors on the road. When I went there seven years ago, there was lots of people doing the, you know, they had a pork pit or they were, you know, barbecuing chicken on the roadside. And, it, you know, you'd stop and you'd, you know, you'd pick it up and you'd eat it and, you know, sit on the roadside. You don't see any of that. You see a big sign, no vending allowed. So that's probably why it's got something to do with the food safety. And it's probably, you know, I can understand you know, I can understand that taking place. You want to know that your food is um, produced and packaged and cooked in a certain way. So, and that there's facilities for the people who are cooking the food to use the toilet and wash their hands and stuff like that. So I get that. But um, I didn't realise it was because of the food and safety initiative thing, why we didn't see them. So that means, you know, money is once again being taken out of local people's pockets. Uh, in 2018, uh, 600 Jamaican officers and engineers from the public sector benefited from training program in Japan. That's interesting. I didn't know that. And that's good because that is local indigenous Jamaicans benefiting from that program. I don't know what exactly that they learned. I don't know what they're coming back to do, but hopefully it's to benefit um, indigenous Jamaicans. So let me just show you this video. It is four minutes long and I'm just going to do a closing statement at the end but um, it is important that you actually see it. Let me see if I can put it around here. I want to talk about a country which has had the world's best performing stock market in 2018. We're talking about Jamaica, of course. And we're joined now by the island's finance minister, Nigel Clark. I'm very pleased to say is here with us in New York, visiting the United Nations. Wonderful to have you with us. What an end to 2018, what a beginning to 2019. Fitch upgrading your debt rating, seeing that you're managing to square your public finances, cutting the debt load, seeing renaissance in terms of mining. What's the sweet spot right now? What's your secret sauce? Jamaica has uh, had you know, tremendous performance over the last several years uh, with a restoration of macroeconomic stability and a return to growth. We've had 16 consecutive quarters of economic growth and we have been engaging in a series of structural reforms, fiscal, monetary and other reforms to uh, restore the economy's health and the, the results uh, have been gaining attention around the world. And the stock market is responding as well. Um, the central bank is supporting education uh, of what's going on economically, tackling debt specifically. You mentioned reforms. What was interesting was there is a series of videos that was released on Twitter addressing inflation and monetary policy. Talk to us about how that came about. Well, Jamaica has for a very long time had a monetary regime that focused on the exchange rate as a, t as a tool of monetary policy. We have been moving away from that gradually from a managed float to a market determined exchange rate. I'm putting those videos an below each other. target being the anchor of monetary policy. Uh, late last year, in a you know, speech I gave, I, I sent out a very light hearted critique. Uh, to the central bank saying that they're doing all of this but not communicating to the Jamaican people who ultimately they are accountable to. Mm. We're, we're, we have legislation in parliament to make the central bank independent. And did they respond to my critique? Uh, responded by originating a series of videos designed to bring the Jamaican people into the conversation, into this uh, big change that we're making, this policy change. We are 
We have legislation to make the central bank independent. So monetary policy, the implementation of it will be independent of the executive. And uh, moving towards an inflation targeting regime as a cornerstone of monetary policy. And it was very important uh, to communicate to the Jamaican people in the best way possible. And the, the fact is that in Jamaica, whether you're communicating about uh, a glass of, uh, of, of juice or beer, or you're communicating complex monetary policy, music helps to uh, to let it, music helps the communication effort. And uh, they wouldn't have expected the video to had received as much attention as it did, but very happy that the message uh, is getting across to the Jamaican people. Did it go viral? Did it go viral, the videos? The video, yes, from, uh, yes, the video went viral, absolutely. Measured by the number of times it was shared and the number, number of times it was viewed, it went viral and it was seen all over the world. I yes. believe the central bank got comments from uh, monetary policy makers in other countries. There it is. Uh, recommending... Well, we can't listen in, but we can certainly watch it. <laughs> there we go. There's the music. Exactly. Just showing how reggae can be a form of communication. I'm interested in the communication of how you no, talk about growth going business forward. Business. Because at the moment, we're seeing what, I mean, saw sort of Fitch saying, like, you're going to get about 2% growth going for the next couple of years. But the Prime Minister's focus is for 4%. How is that to be achieved? Why is it not yet achieved? Yeah. So Jamaica, you know, is emerging from a period of high debt and low growth over a long period of time. Our debt, or growth over 40 years was about 0.9%. Over the last 10 years, it was about 0.2%. Over the last five years, about 0.5%. We are now seeing growth at a level of, of 2%, and we've had 16 consecutive quarters of economic growth, the longest such stretch of quarterly growth since we started measuring growth quarterly in 1997. We, as you have quoted the Prime Minister, you know, we want to elevate levels of growth, and so what we are investing in infrastructure to allow us to improve the productivity uh, of <laughs> business. We are investing in uh, training to improve the productivity of labor, and we are reforming our tax system, uh, bringing forth greater economic efficiency by getting rid of distortionary taxes, taxes that distort the allocation of capital in the economy. So, um, yeah, so that's it really. Um, like I said, you know, it does sound a bit, unless you're an economic, unless you're an economist, it does sound a bit complicated and it's complicated to me, which is why I wanted to do that little introduction and I hope it makes a bit of sense. Um, I just want to close by saying that in 2013, Jamaica's GDP was 147%, making it one of the most indebted countries in the world. Now, in 2019, Jamaica has had the best performance on the stock market, cutting its debt by the equivalent of more than half of GDP without handouts, debt relief and bilateral debt. So, who have we got to thank? We probably do have to thank China. We do have to thank Russia. We do have to thank um, USA. Um, and probably some, a few Jamaicans. Um, so, yeah, basically I just wanted to share that with you. So Jamaica is on the up and up, but I hope it's not at the expense of our indigenous Jamaicans who still need to thrive as well. Okay, bye-bye.